Hey everybody, Tiffany Solorio here for Finnebear's creative team. I am so excited to be sharing my first project with you guys. I absolutely love Finnebear's products and have been using them for quite some time. So I am so honored to be part of the team. So I am going to have all of the supplies listed down below. So if I miss something, um, be sure to check the description box for all of the details on all of the supplies that I am using. I'm starting off um, unwrapping this ATC box and I'm going to be altering it today. I thought it was really cute uh, and I wanted it to look really cool for all of my ATCs. So the first step I am doing is using some clear crackle paste and using Finnebear's uh, silicone spatula to spread it around. This one, I should have opened a new one. This clear crackle paste is probably a few years old and uh, it didn't, I mean, there's like little cracks, but I put it on pretty thick hoping to get bigger cracks, but I think because it's so old, um, you know, nothing lasts forever, but I probably just should have used a uh, newer one. Um, but I did get a cool effect in the end. So I like to use a spatula so that I can get a variation between uh, thin areas and thicker areas because with the crackle paste uh, you can get thicker and larger cracks um, if you put the crackle paste on thicker and thinner cracks if you layer it on thinner. So that's what I am doing here and with the spatula it's really easy to uh, do that. All right, so that dried completely and I let it dry on its own and it's really important to do that so that you get the best cracks that the uh, medium will give you. <laughs> and I am taking a stencil, which is, I have it right here because I always forget the name. It is, of course, it's covered up, Tapestry. And I'm using some paper texture paste, which is probably one of my favorite mediums to use. And I am again using Finnebear spatula, the silicone spatula, to spread it around. Uh, the uh, paper paste dries pretty quickly and it holds lots of liquid uh, because what I like to do is when I add a little bit of color, I like to add a lot of um, water uh, so that it kind of moves around and spreads around wherever it wants to organically. Uh, and it holds up really well, so I am going to add that all around the box. I don't add the um, the design to um, like the inside of the box or anything. I do add a little bit of just uh, straight paper paste with the spatula, no stencil, um, to different areas like the the middle of the box, if that makes sense. Um, so after that dries, and again it dries pretty quickly, I did uh, speed it up a little bit with my heat tool. Just be, you know, careful when doing that because it could just bubble up and um, although that's a really cool effect, that's not what I wanted to do. Alright, so I am now going to layer some metal embellishments together and I absolutely love these ones. I kept it pretty simple. Um, I think sometimes seeing a simple project that turns out amazing, um, the colors and uh, just the simplicity of it all, um, I think is important just as much as seeing really intricate, detailed you know, uh, projects as well. So. I am going to add all of that together with some heavy body gel. I think the heavy body gel is perfect to uh, adhere metal to metal. And I wrapped some wire um, around some of the embellishments. And you're going to see me kind of put that down. And I just smush it down. It's pretty thin. 
uh, wire and so it moves and you can manipulate it really well. I'm going to add a little bit of the uh, heavy body gel onto this little tiny mechanical heart and I'm going to shove it in that wire so that the wire sits on top of it and it takes me just a second. I should have probably thought about that before I um, put the wire on but I wanted the look of that little small heart in the center there. I am now cleaning up the edges of where I got a lot of excess excess uh, gel that I don't want and I'm just using a little paintbrush to do that and you really need to let this dry completely because when you add uh, gesso or anything on top of it um, your elements and everything can kind of um, come up and you you don't want that you want it to all stay together so I let it dry for a couple hours and I'm coming back now and I'm going to paint the whole thing with black gesso. Uh, to be honest, I don't think I've ever done a rusty project on black gesso. I normally always do white. So I wanted to kind of challenge myself and see how it would turn out and I absolutely love it. I am going to add a little bit of water so that it kind of spreads out a little bit because of the uh, the texture paste and the intricate design uh, it needed a little bit of help to kind of get in all of those grooves and all of that um, the design from the from the stencil and instead of just painting on I am kind of pouncing it on as well um, that way again it can kind of get in all of those um, grooves and stuff and at this point, my cat, Callie, was walking around my table. <laughs> she could see her little tail there. Um, and I don't know what had happened, but at this point, my I guess I my camera died or s something. I know that my camera, after 25 minutes, it just automatically shuts off. So at this point, because I was paying more attention to my cat going around my table, I didn't pay attention to... Um, my camera and it wasn't recording so I had just added uh, a couple more coats of the black gesso to the box and now I'm taking the rust paste and I am using the brown rust paste first and I have one designated brush for my rust paste this way I have one brush just for rust paste because when all of those granules of the sand or whatever is mixed in um, to the paste it gets in all of those bristles and then it kind of spreads out the paintbrush so you can't really use it for any intricate painting not that I do any or anything like that but um, just so that I have one designated for the rest paste and I do the same thing with my art alchemy wax I have one designated paintbrush for that as well it just makes it easier so that I'm not gunking up a bunch of different uh, paint brushes when I don't need to. So I am going to add the brown rust paste all over the box, uh, not being too heavy handed, but also not being too light handed, kind of in between. Uh, I wanted a really dark um, undertone, but I also wanted a lot of that black to show up as well. Um, and then I'm going to go in with the red rust paste and this is just going to highlight a little bit more of those areas and I don't have a lot on my brush and I am just barely sweeping over that texture and all of that design from that stencil and same with the uh, all of the metal pieces and it just kind of highlights uh, all of the cool texture on this project. And it's kind of the same concept with the Art Alchemy Wax, except this is uh, rust paste, which is amazing because I love the matte finish and it just looks amazing. I love the texture that it has. Um, and yeah, so I am just kind of going along very lightly um, brushing on that red rust paste 
and then I will go in with the yellow rust paste in the end um, just to highlight those areas just a little bit more and I want to make sure that I get all of the sides as well and after the uh, the top dries or the front of the box dries I will do the back I don't do it on camera but I do do that off camera um, I don't want to forget that as well so um, you definitely don't want to forget the sides of a canvas or any other project that you might be working on all right so here is the yellow rust paste just going to take it very very lightly brush over those areas that I want a little bit more highlighted uh, like some of that texture paste um, that I used with the stencil and then um, all of that really cool designs on the metal pieces like the wings and then I want to highlight um, the uh, wire that I wrapped around uh, some of those embellishments as well and then I'll go around a little bit on the edges and then I'm going to go back in after it's pretty dry uh, just to highlight a little bit more of some of those areas and I love how this turns out it just looks amazing I have seen a lot of people use black gesso with the rest paste and I just never have done it before I'm glad that I did and I definitely will be making more projects uh, like this because I absolutely love the rest paste and uh, yeah so I'm just going to finish up highlighting some of those areas I don't know if you guys can hear the dogs they are pretty far away but I have my window open it is so nice outside we just got done with uh, summer so I'm definitely taking advantage of keeping my window open um, I had added a little bit more of the brown rust paste and then I didn't like how it looked so I went back over and did the same steps so um, I added a little bit of red rust paste and now I'm going back in with some of the yellow rust paste just to um, finish it off and you can see here that is basically it it seems like a pretty simple project but you know when you're creating sometimes a simple a more simple project is just what you need to create and sometimes you don't have a lot of time and this definitely did not take too much time the most time was waiting for the crackle paste to dry but to be honest you could probably skip that step uh, because you add the paste uh, with the stencil and all of that stuff so I'm going to show you guys up close and then I will show you guys a few photos and that is going to be it I hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to hit the like button, share it on social media, and don't forget to leave a comment down below. And again, the supplies are listed down below. And I want to thank you guys so much for watching, and I will catch you guys later. Bye!